Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, I'm super excited because I just received our four boxes that Jeff Williams sent back up to us from our collab we did a couple weeks ago with him down in his super, super high-grade gold mine down in Nevada. We have one bag out of the four that Jeff and I took a representative sample across the vein in a spot that's kind of run a mine ore for him in this, in this property. Jeff wanted to know how much gold could be recovered both via assay and gravity recovery from that sample. So we're gonna take that bag of ore, I'm gonna crush it down, I'm gonna pan some out, figure out how much gold I can recover by panning and gravity, and then I'm gonna do another sample where we assay it and figure out how much, if you just melt it all and collect all the gold into a button, how much you can collect. And then we can analyze those two for the amount recovery you can get with each. Okay, opened our first box here and look, look at what he wrote on there. Rich specimen. Nice. Love it. So we'll pull this one out. I'm going to do something here too, I notice. We'll set that aside. We've got a little dust down here in the bottom. So we'll get that in the pan and we'll see if we can pan anything out of that dust. See if anything snuck through this bag. Here's our super fine dust that I got out of the bottom of the boxes. So let me get it panned out, see if we've got any gold in there. Okay, I have seen some rich gold ore before, but nothing like this. So I'm not, I'm not even close to done panning. I mostly just have panned off the, the mud and the fine stuff. And this is still, I haven't done anything with this. This is just the dust out of the bottom of the boxes. And look at the gold showing up in the corners. We've, we, the, we leaked gold all over the postal service from Nevada up to Bellingham. It's, this is like, this is, this is unbelievable to me. This is just the dust, just the stuff that leaked through the bag. And it is so, so rich. We probably lost a hundred dollars and the, the, the post office needs to be sweeping up the floors out there, getting all this gold we lost. But look at, I mean, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. It's just a yellow line almost all the way across the bottom of that stuff. Let me get her panned out all the way and see what we got here. But I mean, again, just the dust. Look, just the dust in the box. Look at that. And I've got, I don't know, 20, 30 pounds to play with. My, my mind is just blown away. Look at this stuff. Look at, look at how rich this stuff is. That's all gold. All that stuff in the top of the pan is gold. And that is from the dust in the bottom of the boxes. That is all, so I can get it shaded. That is all gold. See all that? There was like a half a cup of dust. And that's the gold I got. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever seen? Now that we've got all excited about the yellow in the pan that we saw, we're going to do a little bit of an assay. We're going to figure out how much gold Jeff has per ton of rock in these bags. So we're going to start with the one right here. This is from the top of the rays, Jeff, if you remember. This is the one we're going to start with. So let me turn the camera around. We'll take a look at our sample, and we'll get it processed through and figure out ounces per ton or grams per ton. Here's what we're working with. It's maybe about a gallon worth of stuff. Jeff, this is from the top of rays. So the first thing I'm going to do, it's already pretty small, but I'm going to resurrect this old crusher here. Kind of got it lashed together. But how this works is I feed the material down through here. This plate is stationary, and this plate turns, and the stuff stays in there until it comes out this little slot between them, and it'll fall down into my patented or sample catcher, garbage can lid. And once we get it ground up fine, I'm gonna do a little test pan, we'll weigh out the uh, a sample, and then I will also take a sample of it and we'll assay it and figure out how much gold we have.
And now a lot of you may be asking yourselves, why is he using this old piece of junk when he's got all these fancy hammer mills and shaker tables and all this other stuff? And the reason is, I can get this thing clean, 100% clean, no contamination. We can wipe all this down and make it so there's no contamination between our samples. And when you're running small batches like this, maybe 10, 15 pounds, you want to make sure there's no contamination between your samples, especially when one of your samples or some of your samples are really, really rich, like we have with uh, some of these specimen bags that we got. So I'm going to get all this wiped down and cleaned out real good. Here's the stuff from the rays. And so now I'm going to weigh out a little bit. I'm going to get it all mixed up, powdered, get it all mixed up, and get a pan of it. We'll see what a pan looks like. I'm going to measure out a certain amount of material. I'm going to pan it, and then I'm going to take another sample, and we'll melt it down and assay it. And that'll give us a pretty good idea of how much gold per ton is in this stuff. All right, now we're going to get a little technical. Here's our sample. I'm going to measure out one kilogram on our scale here. There's our material right at a kilogram. So now I'm going to very, very carefully pan this out. I'm going to pan this down to concentrates. I'm going to suck out all the free gold I can find. And I'm going to melt it down into a little bead. And that's going to tell us how much free gold is in this ore at this grind side. I'm going to do a sieve analysis on this and figure out the amount of material we have that passes each screen. And that'll give us a pretty good idea of the amount of gold that we can recover by gravity methods at this grind size. Now after I'm done with all this, I'll smelt a sample and that'll tell us the total amount of gold per ton in the ore. And I want to make sure that you understand those are two different things. The amount of gold that you can gravity recover at a certain grind size may be way different than the amount of gold that's in the ore altogether, that's smeltable. We're getting down to the very last of it here. And this is a pretty interesting ore because it's so clean. There's a little bit of sulfides in there, it looks like. That little black stuff. But... I mean, that's, there's, that's hardly any for typical hard rock ore. Most of the veins will have more than that in there. And this, again, is a little bit more typical of a standard hard rock ore where it's not just all gold like the first band. So let me get this swirled around here a little bit. All right, there's our little bit of gold there. So I'm going to take our snuffer bottle. I got it all nice and cleaned out. I'm just going to suck up that little bit of gold, try and not get a bunch of contamination with it. And now I can just re, re swirl it around there and get it cleaned up a little bit more. I don't want to get too much of this black sand sulfide stuff in there because it kind of screws up the process. All right, got our stuff. Nice and clean there. It's all in the snuffer bottle. I've pulled the straw out. I'm just going to turn it over my finger. Get everything swirled down to the bottom. And leak it into that little bit of shop towel there. Got a lot more black sand than I was hoping for, but I think the lead will take care of it. All right, well, I've cut off our little bottom of the shop towel there where all our gold is. So I'm going to put that in this cupel. I'm going to take some lead, maybe, I don't know, maybe 10 grams worth. Put it there like that. And we'll put it in the furnace. We'll get it up to about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. The lead is going to melt and start to oxidize. The oxides are going to be carried off into this cupel and absorbed. And all the gold and silver and other precious metals, if any, are going to not oxidize and stay in a little bead. And as the lead oxidizes away, it's going to carry any other base metals with it. 
leaving a little tiny button of just the precious metals right in the bottom there. When we pull that out and cool it down, we can weigh that. Because we use one kilogram of ground ore, we can multiply that bead by a thousand, and that'll tell us how much gold ounces per ton or grams per ton we have. Okay, let's see if I can do all this with one hand. So I like to preheat my crucibles. Now I can pick up our that part, add the lead on top. There we go. Now we'll let that cook and see what our button weighs. Now we're going to do a quick screen analysis of this stuff. And I've got three screens here. I've got a 20 mesh screen. I've got a, uh-oh, that one's a 60 and that one's a 100. So I'll measure out about 50 grams of this, this crushed rock over here. And we'll screen it through these screens and we'll measure the weight of each sample that sits on top of the screen. And that'll give us a, a sieve analysis of how fine we ground it. Well, we're doing 100. So we'll do a 100 gram sample. Yeah, I gotta do all of it. And so you just get the screen stacked like that. And then you just shake them. And so almost everything went through a 20 mesh. There you go. Now I need two hands. Let me get this screen through and I'll show you what we got sitting on each screen. Here's our four cuts. This is the 20 plus. Here's 20 to 60 mesh. Still see the grains in there. Here's 60 to 100. You can still see some of the bigger grains in there, but just barely. And then here's the 100 mesh minus. It's pretty much powder. Well, here we have them weighed out. Here's your 20 plus is about a gram. Also, this is percentage since we did uh, 100 grams. So 47 grams or 47% 20 to 60, 21% 60 to 100, and 31% minus 100. So those are, that's the sieve analysis results. And that'll tell us kind of how much gold we recovered at this grind size. So if there's a significant amount more gold when we assay the raw material, we will know that there's a lot of gold still tied up in these particles. But if, for example, we get almost the same amount of gold from the panning assay versus the smelting assay, we'll know that we pretty much get all the gold liberated at this grind size. Here's our little bead from our panning experiment. So let me see if I can get this guy out of there. There we go. We'll get it weighed here. 0 0.022. And here's the beauty of the metric system. So we did one kilogram to get one metric ton. You multiply that number by a thousand. So you move that decimal spot over three places. And that stuff looks like it's about 22 grams per ton. That's about two thirds of an ounce per ton of gold. And judging by the color, it might be hard to tell on the camera, but it's definitely gold colored, but it's not that super shiny yellow gold. Oh, I get my finger out of the way. So I'm probably thinking that's somewhere in the 80% range or so. So realistically, as far as gold content, you're looking at uh, maybe 15 to 18 grams per ton, somewhere in that range. Now we're gonna try and do a little smelting assay here. So let me get, I like to use 100 grams. So let me get 100 grams weighed out. 100 grams. Soda ash, 50 grams. Borax, 150 grams. Litharge, 25 grams. And three grams of just cooking flour for carbon. We'll get that all mixed up. Pour it into a new crucible here. And now we'll put it in our furnace. So for this smelt or this assay, 
I didn't add any silica because a lot of the gang rock is silica, so there's plenty of silica in there. And I don't need a whole lot of soda ash, but I used a lot of borax to help thin out the silica and make it fluid. Because this material doesn't have a whole lot of sulfides and a lot of it is oxidized, I don't need to add any iron nails like I've done in the past. The litharge that I used should oxidize any little bit of sulfides that are in there. And the carbon in the flour will help reduce any remaining litharge to our lead button that will then collect our gold and come down into the bottom of our cone mold. Now this is pretty cool. Look at that color. It's like emerald green. And this is like classic assay where the ore is really, really clean. That green color is probably a little bit of iron contamination in there. But just showing you how clean that ore is. There's not a whole lot of sulfide contamination or oxide contamination. It's just quartz and gold and, and that's it. A lot of the stuff I do is just black, black. You can't see through it or anything, whereas this is quite translucent. Here we go. Oh man, that is just, look at that. That is just classic. There's our lead button, the slag. You can see, you can see through it. So there's, there's actually a film of slag on that lead button, but it's so clear you can see through it. And then look at this, look at the slag we made. Hold it up to the, hold it up to the light. You can see through it. Oh man, it's just beautiful stuff. Really nice color there. But we'll get our lead button weighed and we'll get it in the cupelling furnace and figure out how much gold we got in this stuff. Well, I just pulled this out of the furnace. There's our little gold bead. But we're having a lightning storm come through and it's raining like crazy on the top of our tent here, so. So a couple things I want to point out here before we get too much farther. This bigger bead is the one from the panning but we used a one kilogram sample for that. Whoops. And it's quite a bit more gold colored. I don't know if that comes across in the video than this one. And this one is obviously the smaller bead. That's the one that weighs 0 0.009 grams. And that's from only 100 grams of sample that we ran through the smelting process. This one is quite a bit more silver. So I think earlier in the video I said this one is probably 80, 75%, 80 gold to silver ratio. Because this one is more silver colored, this is probably closer to 50, 50 gold to silver. So we got two different weights we got to deal with it and two different gold concentrations. So let's go do some math and figure out what we have for recovery on these two. So let's take a look at our samples here. We'll go over panning first. We started with a one kilogram sample of material. I panned that down, sucked the gold out, and got a bead that weighed 0 0.022 grams once it got melted down and cupelled in the furnace. Judging by the color, it's about 75% gold. I don't have the ability to get it to pure gold, so we estimate based on color, and it's worked pretty well for us in the past. So when you multiply 20, uh, 0 0.002 grams by 1,000, because there's 1,000 kilograms per metric ton, you get 22 grams per metric ton, and that works out, based on the percentage of gold, to be about 16.5 grams of gold that can be recovered per ton based on the screen analysis that we did and panning or gravity recovery. Now, smelting is a little bit different story. Smelting, we did 100 grams, got a bead that weighed 0 0.009 grams, and based on the color, we're estimating it at about 50% gold by weight. Because we only did 100 grams, we got to multiply this by 10,000, which gives us 90 grams per ton. But because it's only 50% gold, we end up with 45 grams per ton of gold, or about an ounce and a half per ton. All right, guys, well, we covered a bunch of ground today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And Jeff, I hope that information helps you with some future decisions in your gold mine. And make sure to stay tuned for some more videos of that super, super rich specimen gold. I'm going to be playing with that stuff here shortly. So keep an eye out for that video coming up. And if you guys have any questions or comments, you can leave me a comment down below.
So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.